So, far away Nisha, who's your favourite ancient Greek demigod? It's got to be Hercules. <laughs> that's handy, because that's who we're talking about today. Pankration is a now defunct form of martial arts practiced across the ancient world by some of the hardest and most unfuckwithable badasses to have ever lived. An unsurprising fact, given that, according to myth, it was invented by Hercules in his fight with a bulletproof lion. So, Carl, what is pancrashing? We should probably discuss that first, yeah. So, pancrashing, as mentioned, is a now defunct form of martial arts that is essentially a hybrid fighting style that combines elements of both wrestling and boxing, which were the two most popular events at the ancient Olympic Games. Pancrashing itself quickly became the most popular sport at the Games uh, because it was the most bloody and brutal affair because people back then just like to see guys kick the ever-loving shit out of each other. And if anyone's curious what pancrashing means, it is a word formed from two ancient Greek words, specifically pan and kratos, with pan meaning all and kratos meaning power, meaning that pancrashing can roughly be understood to mean the one with all the power, uh, which alludes to the fact that to win a pancrashing bout, you need to use all of your strength. So yeah, you mentioned that both boxing and wrestling were really popular. So obviously, mm -hmm. I'm assuming pan crashing was super popular. Yes, uh, because it was basically, let's just combine everyone's two favourite Olympic events into one super event. And uh, pan crashing was one of the most popular sports at the ancient Olympic Games, in part because it was a very brutal affair. People just kicked the ever-loving shit out of each other. And there was almost nothing against the rules besides eye gouging and fish hooking, which is putting your fingers into the mouth of your opponent. Everything else was fair game, up to and including kicking your opponents in the balls, which was not only a legal tactic, but one that was highly recommended due to its effectiveness, because like all ancient Olympic sports, pancrashing was practiced in the nude. Uh, the other reason it was so popular is because, as mentioned, it was believed that to win a pancrashing bout, it required all of your strengths. So it was seen as the ultimate example of um, physical fitness because you needed to use like all of your strength and all of your skill, cunning and guile to win a pancrashing bout, whereas things like wrestling and boxing tended to be won by the biggest guy because in wrestling, all you needed to do was throw your opponent to the ground, uh, which is obviously a lot easier for a much larger man. And in boxing, it was just knock the other person out, which again, was a lot easier for a, you know, a bigger guy to do. Whereas Pancrashen, which combined both of these elements, required a lot more finesse and skill. And as a result, it could and was won by smaller men. Meaning in addition to being like, you know, a more visceral affair was also just a greater example of skill and resulted in more upsets and underdog victories, which are always the best thing in sports. It, surely though, if they're allowed to kick each other in the balls, one blow would just take a guy down. Well, yeah, that did happen sometimes, and that's what made Pan Crashing so exciting, because you might see that one-hit knockout, like you do sometimes in boxing, but uh, as I mentioned, it's a very effective tactic and a recommended one, so a lot of guys did learn to defend their balls, which resulted in some, presumably, some very interesting matches, but there were other tactics favoured uh, by Pan Crashingists, I, th I think that's the right word, to refer to people who practice the sport, my favourite being a... Um, a famous pancrashionist called Leontiscus, I believe, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, whose nickname in the ancient world was Mr. Fingers, because his oh. favourite tactic for winning a pancrashion bout was to grab an opponent's hands and break all their fingers one by one until they gave up. Mr. Fingers. He's also known as, like, well, it's, that's one interpretation of him as, like, finger breaker, but Mr. Fingers is too funny to me. Yeah, I say finger breaker sounds more epic, but Mr. Yeah. Fingers is just hilarious. Like no one wants to go into a battle with Mr. Fingers. <laughs> like when you fight, who am I fighting today? Is it John the Ball Kicker? No, it's Mr. Fingers. Oh no. So obviously the article is about Hercules. Yes, and Hercules is a mythological figure, and Pancration and the Olympics are things that actually happened and existed. So people are wondering what's going on there. Well. Like many things in the ancient Greek world, the actual origins of Pancration are not known. And the best guess of historians is that it was likely invented several hundred years before it first appeared at the Olympic Games in 776 BC. I believe, I think that's accurate. And uh, they've said, uh, yeah, we don't know where it came from, but there are references to it as it being a thing that people were aware of at this point. So it likely existed for a while before then. Otherwise, how would people know what it was? And that's accurate, but it's also very boring. So let's instead talk about who the Greeks thought invented Pancration. So I'm going to guess they thought Hercules invented it. They did, yes. And uh, ancient Greek myth posits that Pancration was either invented by the demigod Hercules or 
the great hero king Theseus. And the version of the story that says Theseus invented Pancrash and says that it was invented out of necessity um, during his fight with the Minotaur. Uh, you know, the half bull, half man creature that lived in that huge maze that Theseus killed and felled with his bare hands. Uh, supposedly, according to the myth, um, by punching it until it fell down and then breaking its neck, thereby combining um, boxing and wrestling into one hybrid fighting style that was superior to the sum of its parts because it allowed him to take out the fucking Minotaur. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the Minotaur. But the uh, Minotaur is such yeah. a cool, like, mythological being because no one seems to know what the fuck it looked like. Did you ever have the PlayStation game of Hercules? No. Is this, like, based on the Disney movie or just one called Hercules? Yeah, it's based on the Disney movie, but I okay. always remember the Minotaur level. He stood at the top of these stairs and just threw, like, massive rocks at you <laughs> and you just had to hit them back. <laughs> that was <laughs> fucking, it. Fucking Minotaurs, man. <laughs> Something I like that they do in video games though is they take these things from myth, like the Minotaur or the Hydra, and they turn them into just sub-bosses. Like in God of War, you fight multiple Minotaurs. It's like, oh yeah, Theseus killed one and it was really hard. He had to invent a new martial art to do it, according to myth. Um, Kratos kills them for power orbs. <laughs> for fun. <laughs> and he kills multiple of them. It's great. It's like uh, uh, in uh, Devil May Cry. In uh, Devil May Cry mm -hmm. 3, um, the very first boss that you fight proper is Cerberus. You know, the legendary mythological dog that guards the gates of hell. And you fight him on level 3 as the boss and he gives you a pair of nunchucks. And that's all he gets. <laughs> but then in Devil May Cry <laughs> 5, you go all the way down to hell and you fight another Cerberus. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's just many Cerberuses and you beat up one. It's great, I love that shit. We're getting back to the topic at hand, like one version posits that he was invented by Theseus by necessity while fighting the Minotaur. However, my favourite version of the myth, he says that it was invented by Hercules or Heracles, depending on how you want to pronounce it, um, during his fight with the Nemean lion. And if people don't remember ancient Greek myth, the Nemean lion was a giant lion supposedly immune to all forms of conventional weaponry that Hercules was tasked to kill. And the story goes that Hercules, upon realizing that the Nemean lion was just too baller and too badass to be killed by earthly weapons, got it in a headlock and choked it to death. And all artwork of this is amazing, but my favorite one is the one that got turned into a meme. And it's like Hercules ripping the lion's mouth open. And it's just like the caption underneath is, when you hear your dog chewing on something, you don't know what it is. <gasps> yes, yes, I've seen that. <laughs> and yes, I know this channel's called Fact Fiend and we are discussing a literal myth, but it is a fact that ancient Greek people believe this is how Pancration was invented. And that's <laughs> fucking amazing. So far away Nisha, we discussed briefly just creatures from ancient Greek myth. So is there any particular creature from ancient myth, Greek or otherwise, that you quite like? Well, mentioning Hercules again, mm -hmm. um, the Hydra was always a favourite of mine. I always yes. liked how when you cut off one head, it just grows three more. And then there's yeah. just like infinite heads. <laughs> the Hydra, and people don't know the Hydra, the, uh, the myth behind it is that it was a legendary fearsome creature that could not be killed by conventional means, because every time you cut off one of its heads, two more would grow in its place. And um, it's a story that shows that Hercules was not only very strong, but also very smart. Because uh, Hercules realised that if you cauterise the wound as you cut the head off, the head won't grow back. And I love that, because that's what a lot of those myths do. They're supposed to showcase not only the strength and power of the heroes, but also their ingenuity. Um, like when Theseus gets stuck in the maze where he fights the Minotaur, he gets out by yeah. just taking some thread. <laughs> like he just gets some thread and that's how he finds his way out of the maze. He's like, oh yeah, that's pretty good. Like, that's very smart. Well well done, Theseus, for figuring that one out. <laughs> uh, I think mine might be Cerberus because there's so many interpretations of it and they're all awesome because there's just something cool about the idea of the three-headed dog. Because it's just, take creature, give it more heads. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be a thing with the Hydra and the uh, Cerberus. It's like, oh yeah, multiple just, heads. Just that's give scary. something more heads. And then there's uh, a couple ones that I like just because they're so weird. It's like the Manticore. Uh, that's one of the ones I like just because it's like, fuck it, what can we make up? Just throw some shit together <laughs> and like, that's it. Yeah, just so, like get three animals or three like horrible creatures and just put them together. <laughs> well, 
Now you mention it, Nisha, <laughs> let's try and create our own creature of myth, shall we? Um, we'll Ooh, try and yeah. create a, a creature <laughs> that Hercules or Theseus or Perseus, or one of those like, you know, ancient Greek mythological heroes, could fight and combine three <laughs> fearsome animals into one. And I think for the base, we need something quite large. If you haven't got a large base, you can't put much stuff on there. And it needs to be like, you know, imposing yeah. and threatening. Uh, so what's a quite scary large creature? Can it be a mythical creature? Well, yeah, if you want to combine mythical Just, creatures, oh, fuck it, yeah. yeah. Combine a mythical like, creature with another one. I, I want to say, like, dragon. Okay, a dragon. Dragon needs to be in there. So we'll start yeah. with the body <laughs> of a dragon. Uh, what can its head be? Like, what would be scarier Ooh. than a dragon head? <laughs> That's a good point, actually. How am I going to top this? Um... I know, I know, I know, I know. What you should have for its head, it should mm. have Cerberus's head. So it's the body of a dragon with the head of a three-headed dog. <laughs> so it's just a dragon which yes. has got three dog heads on the end. And when I say it has to have dog heads, like Cerberus heads, I don't mean it has the three heads of Cerberus. I mean it has three heads that are all just the dog Cerberus on the end of its neck. So it has nine heads. It, it does need wings, but obviously dragons already have wings, so... Dragons do have wings, yes. The, the drag, dragon keep its own wings, but make them, like, really big wings. <laughs> You just give it much larger wings. Okay, yeah. Sure. Maybe, maybe like but, four wings. Yeah, give it four wings just to make it look fucking baller. And then, um, obviously, dragons are scary, but I think it needs to have giant spider legs. Like she oh my god. From oh, Lord of the Rings, god. a giant spider oh, monster. Like, oh, it needs yeah. to be a dragon with big spider legs, because spiders oh, are fucking god. terrifying. It's got she lobs legs, it's got Cerberus's head and like the body of a dragon. Uh, and then what, uh, finally we need to replace its tail. So what can we replace its tail, tail. with? Well, I'm thinking maybe scorpion's tail. Yeah, that's perfect. So they're pretty, pretty savage. <laughs> so it's got a scorpion's tail, spider legs, double dragon wings, <laughs> and instead of a head, it has three heads that are all dogs. Nailed it. Get out. <laughs> you know what? Try to fight that bastard. <laughs>